um, six months into the office. What is the experience like? Here in the Anambra State House of Assembly, on the 8th Assembly, we bring to you the legislator with Honorable Tony Mwabike, member representing Agatatu constituency, House Committee Chairman on Health in the Anambra State House of Assembly. tell you it's been very it's been as exciting as, as it's been challenging uh, challenging in the sense that this is my first time being in the house of assembly i mean i've been in different positions i've done lots of things in my life uh in different careers but this is my first time being in the house of assembly so there's that challenge of uh acclimatizing myself learning the ropes in the house of assembly the others and the rules participating in house motions and uh, off and on being able to conduct my committee, the committee on health as a chairman, being able to lead the committee on oversight and on familiarization tours and visit to the ministries and press staffers and other MD MDA. So yeah, but overall it's been exciting and it's been very, very, very good. Okay. Uh, a very good question. Before we get into these um, achievements, can you clearly distinguish for us the duties of the legislature? Because most times people who say the services, they have the expectations of the legislator on what they supposed to expect on the executive and they don't use. Can you try to expose the duties or tell us clearly what's the job of the legislator? Yes, um, clearly uh, governance or government is divided into three halves. So you have the executive, you have the judiciary, and of course you have the legislature. The judiciary is um, where you have the law courts, they interpret the law. You have a legislator that makes the law, and that's the law of the law. And then you have the executive that actually executes whatever the law says, and they also run the government, the legislative government. So, um, answering your question basically, there's a clear difference between the executive and the legislature. The executive runs the government, the legislature makes the law. But you have to uh, be specific on the Duties of the legislative legislature. The legislature has three main functions. One is oversight, and the oversight function of the legislature is derived from section 128 and 129 of the Nigerian Constitution. It is statutory, and then the legislature oversight, what it means is that they look into the books and works of the executive and other acts of government to ensure that what Governance assumes the way the executive is doing is exactly what they are doing. It's a form of checks and balance to ensure that government runs and is not abused. So that's the oversight function of the legislature. The other functions, and no one is representation, we're here to represent our people, our constituents. So I'm here as a member representing my daughter to constituents and I'm representing my people. I'm like the heart piece. I'm like someone that I got to constraints sent to the House of Assembly to hold this position in trust for them. So I'm here to speak on behalf of them, say what they want me to say, and then report back to them. That is basically my duty. I'm not supposed to come here and do what I like. I'm supposed to come here and do what my people, my constituents, the people of Agatha to constraints say what they want me to do. It's what I'm supposed to come here to do. So you have that oversight. You have that uh, representation. representation. And then the top function of the legislator is that actual legislation. And legislation means enacting laws, making laws, which is principally also what we do in the House of Assembly. We make laws for the state. So, uh, and those laws are laws that commands the day to day living of the people to ensure that there is the current to ensure that there is order in the society and to ensure that the people enjoy the dividends of democracy. So basically, their functions for the legislature one is legislation, two is oversight, and three is revolution. These three functions, can you say that within this period of time, within these six months, you actively engaged in the three? Exactly. Okay, let's look at motions. One of the uh, trending motions you moved, about five or more motions. Can you tell us? 
uh, what uh, emotions you have moved that has impact on your constituency so far? Well, um, in the over slightly over five months in office, yeah. uh, we are in the record of the 12th of June, and uh, I moved five altogether five motions. Um, my motions principally impact on the life of my constraints. And also, most of my motions also talk in the of Indian Umbra in general. Because we are here to make the world not just for our constituents, but the federal government of the state. Okay, so the first motion I moved in the House of Assembly was a uh, motion to reactivate the Anambra State's burial law, which was enacted in 2019 by the Seventh Assembly. So if you look into what we have in the Anambra State, um, that law hasn't been really, really fully. Uh, implemented because the idea behind that law is to remove ostentatiousness from burial, yeah. from burial ceremonies, to actually accord the dead descent burial, not befitting burial, how people call it. Yeah, descent burial and ostentatiousness. How do you do a descent burial and then without it being ostentatious? Yes, when people are alive, you can accord them befitting living, you can do whatever you can do for them. But when Someone dies, what you call the person is to commit the person in the most decent way to mother egg and then provide the best values of the culture that can provide that person. According to our culture, we see that what's been tenable uh, is that we tend to emulate what is happening in other cultures. We pronounce them to employ all dancers, we kind of get casket that we start to dance, we will start to block the streets when someone died. In our entire career, we will start to block streets. They start to like close businesses. They will start to do balance, we will start, we will start to make uh, portraits, we will start to make uh, souvenirs. You know, so now we will start to buy a house. We will start to cook different kinds of food as if they are celebrating the disease, even when the person is apparently a young person. It should be a period of mourning, not a period of celebration. When someone dies, you want the person. Then you give the person a decent burial. So the apparent outcome of this practice, this obnoxious practice, is that um, about most people now go into um, depleting their reserves, people sell their properties, people sell the land because they want to accord the so called befitting burial to a departed uh, reality. People borrow money from banks, people borrow from others, money they can't be able to pay. In some instances, people believe that they're going to recoup that money from the gifts they're going to get during the burial. Yeah. And in most cases, they never do. So, what happens after burials? People are left depleted. You see, most uh, widows they end up not having anything to train their kids because apparently. The husband relatives have used up the husband's savings to carry out the so called efficient area. So that is what that law tends to correct. The law tends to get the poor back to what our culture is give the departed a very modest area. And that is what we are the House of Assembly. And myself in particular, I want to talk about the government of the United States, which is just two months ago, if you recall, uh, just uh, maybe a month ago, he lost his beloved dad. And in line with this barrier law of an Ambra State, he has fixed December 25th as the funeral, as the date for the funeral of his late dad. The date falls within the time limits given provided under the law. That's number one. Number two is that he has made it very clear that that funeral is going to happen only in one day. Okay, so, which is part of what the, 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 the law provides for. The funeral should be in one day, not like week long, like when they practice in the land. And then three, he has said that there will be no ostentation, no part bearers, 
have seen a number of things. You haven't seen any brooch, you haven't seen any statues, you haven't seen any flyers or billboards advertising the death of the father of the government. The government says no, it won't happen. According to the very law, and he has even said, not well, ahead to say that that day, he's only going to serve people only very decent meals like get water and you can probably maybe rice or a batch or anything from an and that's it. No expectation. So we commend I commend Mr. Government yeah. to so that aspect. So that is uh, the first motion I put in the House of the House of Assembly. I move that that motion that has to do with safety of our people. And that is the safe conversion of uh, petrol power engines to compress natural gas engines. Like you know, of recent, uh, due to the high cost of uh, premium motor spirit petrol and even diesel, people are beginning to convert car engines, generator engines to gas powered engines. So, we talk about compressed natural gas, we talk about the regular gas we use. So, but is it safe? That's one question. If the process of this conversion, this inter-conversion is not regulated, then we're setting ourselves up for disaster. We talk about uh, compressed natural gas. We're talking about uh, what in, in, in chemistry or in science, you talk about limits, explosive limits. These are very, very, very explosive gases that can explode when heated or when uh, irritated or used in the wrong. So we talk about the standard of that conversion, the tubes that are used, the valves that are used, other equipment that are used in that conversion. Are they such that should be pressure-proof that this thing don't explode? So that motion tends to call on the, on the commission for, for petroleum and uh, mineral resources to introduce standards that will regulate the safe conversion of Petrol powered engines into compressed natural gas so that we have our situations where we have ex explosions and we have people dying. We are trying to be preemptive, which is something a responsible government will put into place to protect the lives of our people. That's part of what we hear. And so far, you see that so far, often no one has died from that process. Okay? So that's one of it. I move another motion. Uh, you know, our government has been talking about private community, public community private partnership, yeah, sure. PCP, means of development. Yes. Yeah. So, and he um, yeah, has always mentioned and said the name of the where the people has collaborated with the government, you know, under the late Tony and Kevin Tony Mass. People are building roads, people are developing places using private money. Now, the governor went ahead in several instances to give the statistics that in Anambra State, 98%, over 98% of funds are in private hands. Me and you know that Anambra people are wealthy, Igbo people are wealthy, yeah, sure. both here and in diaspora. But the government has as little as 0.2% of funds in their hands. I mean, the, 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 in the private hands you have about 99 points or something percent. So what happens? How do we develop Anambra State? So the governor is now calling on Anambra indigenous both at home, both in diaspora, to come and join hands with development. Okay? And that is another motion I put in the house of assembly. Calling our brothers and sisters, our wedding individuals living outside of Anambra State. Lagos and Abuja and Kano all over Nigeria and outside, uh, outside Nigeria in diaspora to come home and join hands with the government, collaborate with the government, partner with the government to develop your local communities. If we do that, it's going to encourage inclusivity, it's going to encourage ownership, it's going to encourage um, different forms of partnership, it's going to and create equality because if I'm from Omoana town, if people from Omoana come to join government to develop Omoana, and people from the social justice and the poor you see that they are the poor near the poor development 
Corri no máximo de treinar sem resistência. Então, por exemplo, nós estamos muito mais nos topics que a parte mais chega para o So, that is my problem, which I said, no, why there? Another very important motion I move, which also has to do with my, uh, my committee of health, okay. is calling on the governor to direct the commissioner for education to include basic life support training in the first aid curriculum of our member states. Tertiary institutions okay. and uh, secondary and tertiary yeah, yeah. institutions. At this point, I might have to step in a little bit to speak Hebrew because okay. uh, most of the delegates, the new delegates, and the not communicating. The so, when we talk about basic life support training, if I need to go to the hotel, we can get them up. Okay, we can get them up. We can get them up. Ele foi lá de um ano. 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 Ele foi lá Why are you doing okay, that? Is introducing basic life support training. Most times, if I fly, I will never accept. How can I get that wage? Come on, let's make a new car. Hey, what the fool? Let's see. And let's have a good. Just like on now, twenty people accident. You know, they get out. If one of them has a new car, if one of them is in help me, if one of them has a car, if one of them is in the car, let's see. Now, do you blame those people? Let's see pictures. Your, your, your answer will be as good as mine. But the truth is that most times you don't blame them. They don't know what to do. They just don't know what to do. They are not medical doctors. They don't have basic life support training. So they stay there, waiting for an ambulance to come. This man never come. Most people will just die like that. But all who do it, the majority of people with basic life support training. And at this juncture, and is this one, I still want to commend the government of our member states for the work the Ministry of Health is doing and also the wife of the governor, Dr. Mrs. Nunes on health. On health. You, you must have heard about the Nunes on health. It's part of what they are doing. They've been going around schools, teaching uh, children on first aid, on what to do when somebody Collapses when someone is having a heart attack, when there's an accident, you know, all those things. What do you do? So, we talk about CPR, cardio pulmonary resuscitation. Now, by the way, get that, or who knows, or who has a scale or whatever. If you give CPR, the person might survive. And survival rate will not be high. Okay? Now, by the way, you want accident, or who knows, anyway, bleeding. Even for the children and their own blood, because some of them are born with a blood born, I believe, who was a woman for the children. So we we talk about some of them are born. No, we push on the case, you know, push on the law, but the decision, we make it the woman until the doctor can be doctors, paramedics, and any area. So how about the mother? Is that the woman? Okay, and so many other things. You make it to any level of emergency. I can. If I have a problem at school, I can't even go to the hospital. 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 So before we proceed to the motions. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the legislator with Honorable Tony Wabike, member representing the good people of Agatha to constituency. Okay, so, um, before we proceed, you mentioned um, the, from the three motions so far. 
this part the area. You mean four motions? The four motions I mean, should look at the area and that of the, the um, safety motions you are moving. Now looking at the area, the government, for instance, has taken a step to show an example. For instance, in our society, a lot of policing, a lot of a lot of measures need to put in place. Of course, it's not your duty, you're going your parts. How do we measure? Is there a very cool way of measuring compliance? Because one thing is to make a law, another thing is, is the law in full or a percentage of compliance. Do we have a measure for that uh, from the legislative and measure compliance? Because after the government has told nobody's policing the government. But because as a leader, he has shown the example he wants to follow the law. But others might not do so. So what do we do about making the law at this abyss change uh, the very cool level of uh, uh, very cool of compliance? Yes, uh, remember we have uh, different ministries under the executive team uh, doing, uh, doing different jobs. So um, obviously the idea there will be the ministry that will be saddled with uh, compliance. It's not really the work of the House Assembly or what is in the world. But then we are all citizens of a number of states. We see what is happening. That's why we're from different constituencies. I know what is happening in other two constituencies. That's where I come from. Because I interface with my constituents. Every weekend I'm dying, I go up. I attend barriers. I attend weddings. I know how those things happen. The same thing with every other member of the House Assembly. We are party members representing party constituencies. So we know. That's why we are able to come and say this is what is happening and we need to correct it. Moreover, it's important to look at this doctrine that what we do most times, what we do most of these solutions that we call is not really politics. It's most times we focus more on informing the people. This period of was not in 2019, and people have not been compliant with it because they don't want to really or because people are still ignorant. This motion, and if you look at that law, most often has talked talks about informing the people. And then also in this motion, it also calls um, on the government to direct the commissioner in charge to activate the different institutions within the society who are responsible for implementing this law and also to liaise and interface with religious uh, leaders yes. who, are, who are also there, often with the people, during these periods and during these funerals and during those services to get the people informed. So it's more like information and it means that when people are properly informed, they do the right thing. So, sir, on the, uh, we mentioned the motion, part of uh, the functions to this of the legislature, and we want to look at the oversight functions and organization visit. Within the next month, for five minutes, and, uh, what are the strategic oversight functions and organization visit that you have engaged on so far that you can say, yeah, they are worth, they are worth it within this space of time? Yeah. Um, Oversight um, for the and the those are part of the things we've done also, you know, in the, they, they, they count for most of our accomplishments. Uh, so for me, uh, as chairman, as we turn out, uh, we were able to um, visit the Chukwuma College of University Teaching Hospital, Amako, 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 and then uh, it was a very um, uh, educative visit. We were able to see what is happening in that hospital, which is actually helping us to most of the things we are doing with regards to healthcare today. And then we were able to visit the um, Anambra State Primary Healthcare Agency and uh, we were able to understand. By the way, when we go to some of these visits, uh, we're not going there to reach on anybody. The, the paramount uh, reason why we go to these places is to understand the challenges because we all work as a team. There has to be synergy between the base structure and the executive. So going there is to maintain that stage, understand their challenges and see how the legislation can help them. Now those things governor or Truman's of the window, they are again and then they are So we are going to visit the Alhambra State Primary Care Agency. We are going to visit the Alhambra State Health Insurance Agency, ASHA, a very, very important agency. And uh, we had fruitful discussion. In fact, the, um, the director of that agency uh, is, a, is a very seasoned uh, 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 medical practitioner who understands the need for insurance in the uh, delivery of healthcare in the society. And he's doing very well. So, which has informed part of what I am currently uh, doing in my concerns. I'll come to that because we are planning on 
rule out health insurance from the the agriculture organization from the agriculture. We also um, visited uh, other uh, agencies. We were able to visit the School of Nursing uh, more. Everyone has been us, you know, and uh, yeah, we were able to understand the challenges. Uh, we were able to have in-depth discussions with them on how this can be moved uh, forward. So, which the house is working on currently. We also visited uh, the um, the College of Health Technology at Ubusi, um, very very important one, and uh, we visited the Ministry of Health itself. We were able to uh, interface with the commissioner. Dr. Afan Obedike, uh, and uh, I must tell you the young man is doing very well at the Ministry of Health, driving the health policies of Mr. Governor, uh, so that today uh, we have uh, hospitals with doctors. The uh, difference, a uh, clear demarcation, and um, you know, this thing from what was available in the past, where we had hospitals without doctors. We have hospitals without nurses, but today we have hospitals with doctors. We have hospitals with nurses and other allied health professionals. Um, and a whole lot of things have been brought back into the health delivery, healthcare delivery from the Anambra. Take, for instance, the introduction of ambulance services. It wasn't there before, but under this uh, administration, we have ambulance services. And not just ambulance services, we, they have numbers so that when there's an emergency, people can call those numbers and within 15 minutes or less, ambulance is there. And apart from the efficiency of the ambulance service, it is also not expensive so that people can be able to afford it. Because what we have promised in that number is quality and affordable, affordable health care. So you can provide quality health care without the people being able to afford it, then it becomes meaningless. But so those two goes together quality and affordability, and that's what Mr. Governor promised in that number, and that's what is the time with the Ministry of Health. Welcome back, we're still on the Legislative Committee where we're telling you a member representing Agatha Tum Constituency as committee chairman on health and our state House of Assembly. So still on the oversight functions and organization of the Can you tell us more about the, the visit to Apex Nursing School? That looks very interesting. Yes, the Apex Nursing School in the Ubu is a, is a pet project of uh, Apex Hospital in Ubu and I got to look at the area. I'm one of the, uh, actually I'm excited to be part of that project as, uh, because it happened under my tenure yeah. as the chairman of an University Hospital Assembly as a of health. Uh, yeah, we went on an inspection tour of that facility. Uh, just to give uh, a background uh, explanation to the by the Agwata to constituency. Apex Hospital in Ubu, Nkemuwa Mokebo Professor Mozu, the director, na Chobei Ane Mepe College of Nursing, Gade, na Apex Hospital in Ubu, na Agwata. Um, part of the requirements for the House of Assembly or Anambra State Government got a man acts and editor a law to back such an institution or part of the requirements by the national body in charge of him and such institution. So part of what we, we've done is going to inspect that facility can make a sure that what they have there now we meet up with international standards and international best practices for establishment of a college of nursing. And I'm happy to say that what I saw there, I'm very, very satisfied. In fact, what they have there is an approved average. So I have no doubt at all that the school will get the approval. But it's not for us to say our own is to do what we're supposed to do as members of the House of Assembly. So, uh, we've been able to go there, we inspected that facility, and the facility is uh, above average. I hope that uh, very soon, Nagwata will enjoy the first private nursing school in our state. Wow, that's, that's interesting.
was your message? The message to the constituents as you wrap up this stage. Yeah, first of all, last night, and then I got up, I got up to the constituency for their support. So far, so I will extend like I very well here. I'm so proud to be on I got up to the constituency. And I got up to the alum. And wrapping up, I want to use this opportunity to pay tribute to the father of our government. Such as we must be doing a few months ago, and then I the very talking about late past year. I to so rest in peace. And finally, I also want to use this opportunity to pay tribute to the soul of. The former chairman of Ibuku Wan, Mr. Jekwon Chatais, who we lost to the cold hands of death a few months ago as well. And we are being a young man is a very, very touching and very painful one. Living behind little kids. So I want to pay tribute to him for all the work he did for our family, especially in Wopa. And that's the left night to ensure that we won't have election. May so rest in peace. Um, part of what I did uh, when I went to pay uh, funeral uh, rights to him and his home, when I, I offered um, to pay uh, to enroll his son at uh, the ongoing uh, work. Uh, work uh, Enrollment now. So, in that regard, on the 20th, I will be issuing a check to his wife to fulfill that promise. And on that note, I say, may the soul of Uche come to Paris and the souls of all the French people are dead to the mercy of God rest in peace. Thank you very much.